Uh, with that down and out of the way, guys, let's move into our main topic, and that is that uh, the Last of Us series is finally out. Episode 1 is out. We have now seen it. It aired January 15, 2023, and by the time you guys are watching this episode, episode 2 is probably out by now, so keep that in mind. We're simply reviewing the pilot episode, and we're going to talk about a couple of key aspects of it. Um, Overall, got great reviews. It's got a 99% on Rotten Tomatoes, 9.4 on IMDb, 95% of people that watched it um, liked it. And of course, this is HBO show. And but the main article that I'm pulling from Collider is stating that The Last of Us premiere scores HBO's second largest debut in over a decade. Uh, the series is second only to the House of Dragons debut. So let me read this real quick just so you can kind of put in context of how high it was being watched. So this says, uh, video game fans and HBO will both be heaving a sigh of relief this week for different reasons. While the hugely anticipated series The Last of Us has been almost unanimously declared as the best video game adaptation of all time, not a high bar to cross, but still, it also drew phenomenal numbers for the premium television network. Based on Nielsen and first party data, Sunday's series premiere was watched by 4.7 million viewers across linear and HBO Max platforms. This is the second biggest debut for HBO since 2010's Boardwalk Empire behind only last year's Game of Thrones spinoff House of the Dragon. The debut viewership for The Last of Us is also double that of the second season premiere of Euphoria, which ranks as one of HBO's most popular offerings. Sunday night viewership for an HBO series typically represents 20 to 40 percent of the show's total gross audience per episode. So. It's safe to say that they knocked it out of the park, at least, again, speaking from a pilot perspective, that this show not only had the eyeballs watching it, but it was also reviewed nicely by critics and fans as well. So before we kind of dive into the characters and kind of the, the, the look of it, do you agree with this, Andrew? They're saying so far this might be the best video game adaptation of all time. Do you agree with that? And, I mean, did you think it was a great pilot? Yeah, I think it would have been hard for them to actually mess this up. One, because when you're watching the original game, it, it like I, when you're watching all the cutscenes and everything, it almost plays out like yeah. a movie. So you could just almost make it like one for one and be like, here's the guide on how to do it. Just put it on TV and it will play out perfectly. But with how close they were working with, um, I, I can't think of his Neil name, Druckmann Neil Druckmann and, Craig and stuff like that, I'm sure that they really were like, okay, like let's not do what other people are doing. We're like, well, we're just going to take the name and we're just going to fuck up everything else and we're going to use the name and like that's it. Like, no, we're going to take the name based on the game's sake and, you know, just not a one-for-one -one adaptation, but, but stick something... To the, stick to the source material. Stick to the source material while still creating something that feels fresh and they absolutely nailed it. So but best video game adaptation of all time? Or would you still put like... Because I think they underrate things like that are animated as well. Because I love the Castlevania stuff. But I mean... Yeah, I yeah, if we're talking it, live action, then for sure. As long as this thing ends strong as it began, right? Because there's nine right. episodes. It could easily fall off the map, say, episode three, four, five, six. But if it can stay strong, then this thing definitely, I would say, has a chance to be on the Rushmore of, uh, of video game adaptations. If it stays as, as positive as it's been since episode one. Yeah, for sure. But uh, yeah, I... I would agree with their statement as far as you include that word live action. Right. So, um, so again, I love the opening. So let's start getting into what the show is about. Um, obviously, that the uh, the synopsis is Joel and Ellie, a pair connected through a harshness of the world they live in, are forced to endure brutal circumstances and ruthless killers on a trek across. And it kind of dived out there, so I don't know if there was more to that there, but. Uh, the opening of this was awesome. It kind of takes this old, uh, these couple guys sitting. It's like the late '60s. Five minutes of talking oh, I love about that. this kind of possibility that if fungus and, or more particular, fungi were to have to evolve, and they kind of go into this explanation of how it already does this in things like ants, and it, they, have, they have this awesome explanation, and it kind of has a uh, good body Otis from Spartacus, yeah. John Hanna, and it's got um, Big Head from Silicon Valley, played by Josh Brenner. It's a, it's about, I think it's like a five minute opening, and I got to say, it set up it perfectly. There was Perfect no exposition. Yeah, the yes. exposition for this was on point. It instantly in that conversation, and it was cool because it was, it was kind of told through the scientific and then kind of the the unknown, uh, the unknowing. And when you kind of see it, it's kind of bone chilling because at the end, because he's kind of being a smart ass in the beginning, the um the host. But at the end, when he's kind of telling them, it's like all it takes is this, and we're and we lose. I was like, man, that's a, that's a pretty powerful intro that just kind of set the tone for the rest of the episode. 
Yeah, for sure. Especially, too, because the way the conversation ends when he's like, well, you know, these other things, here's what you can do, here's what you can't do. But, yeah, he says, let's say the temperature of the Earth rises, which is like a, you know, a global warming thing, causing something like that to adapt. Then what, well, what can we do? Nothing. There's nothing we can do. Yeah, it's game like, over. Yeah, there's no way to stop it. We haven't made cures for this. There's no way to make cures for this. There's no way to prevent it. It's If global warming happens, then this thing will naturally have to evolve. And yeah, when he's like, he's like, then what happens? Like, we lose. I was like, damn. That's yeah, no, it was really good. I yeah. love that. So then it jumps forward um, in time to I think it was was it present day? I kind of figured if they were doing it twenty twenty or something, I'd, I'd have to double check. But um, it gets into I want to talk about the look and the aesthetic of the world that they've created. So they make this place look. I mean. I mean, assuming when we do the time jump again, it I think looks it's real. like 2002 or something because then it jumps again. Right, right, when it does it. So, yeah, they do a really good job at making the world look real, uh, dirty, depressing, like this dystopian post, um, like, pandemic era when you kind of get later in the episode. But I got to say, and Andrew, you kind of hinted at it earlier, was you got to give, uh, you know, the showrunner, Neil Druckmann, I don't know who's the showrunner, but the creator of it, um, the fact that he was so hands on, you can see it. You can stick to their sticking to that source material. And Craig Mazin, who, um, if you guys aren't familiar with him, uh, he was the showrunner for the show uh, Chernobyl, which was fantastic. And if you've ever seen that, it's a perfect kind of. Uh, if you were to kind of compare him, like that dark, dirty, gritty world that they've kind of taken and then now put into um, The Last of Us. And I got to say. It, I think it takes two halves of that coin for them to do it. One, to know the source material, treat it right, treat it properly, make tell the right story, and then someone else to actually paint the picture of it. Because looking at it, I mean, obviously we've only seen episode one, but the trailer kind of shows more about where they're going. And if you're going to compare that to the video games, which looked awesome and they've remade three times, then the show has to at least kind of kind of match that. And I think they did a really good job doing that. I absolutely love the aesthetic of it and the way that it starts. I think even still is one of my favorite things that they do is you can just watch it at the beginning. You're watching them like live their daily life and everything just seems normal. Again, it looks beautiful, believable area. But when you're looking in the background, there's like subtle news reports mm -hmm. or at the beginning, she's listening to something that's around the world yeah. and they're talking about something and they're talking about like a virus, but they don't really know what it is. And they kind of pass it on you know like you would everyday life almost similar to like what happened with covid over here that i instantly thought of that i was like man you know that's the craziest thing to think of and that's how close and a good job they did of this that it hit the home it's like i remember reading about covid and i'm like oh that would never come over here like that's <laughs> yeah. that's far away problems and is that even really that big a problem and then the more i'm watching this i'm like oh man that's it's so insane yeah and it was really cool how they like andrew's saying how they the way they kind of set it up because the episode is kind of split in the i wouldn't say two halves but there is one point in the beginning um, before the pandemic breaks out. And then obviously there's the next half, which is like 20 years later. And uh, it did a really great job in kind of that easy transition. I was going to say, do you want to kind of jump into the characters right now? Or is there anything else you want to talk about with no, the plot? We can jump into that. Okay. So um, let's start with Sarah first because she is kind of in the beginning. Sarah is Joel's. I, well, I don't want to say spoilers either if you haven't seen it. So we are going to talk about characters in this and what may or may not happen to them. So spoilers if you haven't seen the episode and you want to go watch it and then come back and watch this. But the game is over a decade old. So if you are someone that's played the game already, then you already know this kind of stuff. So right. we're just kind of looking at the, the adaptation from now being into a show. So Sarah, who's Joel's daughter originally, um, surprisingly enough, because her role is so small in the game, surprisingly enough i'm like what are they gonna do with her i liked her instantly i already yeah. was like oh i i like this character she's she's funny she's interesting and then what happens to her eventually when she passes i was like heart struck and i was like dude that was a powerful scene man when you kind of get the you know what's coming and then the death scene at the end i was just like dude so i don't know i thought they did a good job sarah's not in the game much i thought she did there was a great job with her character for how much time she had in this one. I think they did a better job too of making you care for her and as far as that death goes because then you see like her everyday life like not only like her going to school fixing the watch which ends up being like a bigger thing later on but when she goes like next door to the neighbors yeah, and making talking the cookies. to them and make yeah making the cookies and stuff like that like that was just you know seeing that everyday life being 
what some people call, you know, like perfect before everything goes to shit. It's like, man, that just made that turn much more impactful. Yeah. And you can see the, and we'll get into Joel in a minute, but like the relationship she has with her father and how much she loves them and all this stuff. And then when you finally see the way she, and I'm sure they'll do her, I'm sure they'll do flashback scenes. She, I'm sure she'll be in maybe a couple more episodes is like Joel kind of reminisces about the past. So, um, excellent job with her. The character that I thought they could have like, spent the least amount of time on was surprisingly one of my favorites in, right. in that pilot. So uh, the next person I want to move on to is uh, Tess. So Tess in the game was kind of Joel's, I don't know who was really the leader. I don't, I, it's again, I haven't played the game since 2014. So forgive me if my, my memory on the game is a little hazy, but in this one, in the show, it kind of seems like they're lovers. I'm pretty sure that's implied. I don't remember that being the case in the game. I don't think it was ever expressed that way anyway. And if I remember right, the in the game, she didn't look as old as the way they kind of portrayed her in this one. And she definitely didn't look, well, I don't, don't want to say haggard, but as like beat up as the other chick did. So what was your thoughts on Tess? I was going to say, I don't remember her looking as old, but when they remade the game again for PS5, they did like age her up. And that did was they? big people's complaints is like, well, you made Tess and you made her how old. And maybe that's the adaptation they went off of now. Which is, is perfectly fine. I have, no, off, I have no problem with going it. Going off of the PS5 remake. So I actually didn't have an issue with that. Only because I'd seen like the PS5 footage when people were talking about that. Yeah, and I thought she was a strong character. I liked that they very strong. I liked that they assert the dominance that she is kind of the Capitan and he's just kind of the muscle. I like the dynamic that they have, the power roles that they play when they run into certain characters. Everyone knows Tess and Joel at this point. They are an established figure in this in the city that they're living in. Which at this point now we're knowing that this city is ran by. I wouldn't. I don't say it's a government. It's more like like this army or that's kind of going yeah. on. And um, they do a really good job of really making it feel like. Because in the first one, you kind of see the army and you see them executing people, but you're kind of just almost like mm -mm. passing through a little bit. Right. When you're watching this, you feel it a lot more like how he's making the secret shades with the guards, but not only they're hunting people down, or even so, she just happened to be on the street when the fighting started, and they like take her anyways, and she ends up in like lockup. So you really feel their presence a lot more as far as their control in the city than I think what you really see in the game in the first one. Yeah. Um. I'm trying to think. What is it called when that happens? Like, uh, when like the military mil occupation? Yeah, when you do military lockdowns. Oh, it's um, martial law. Martial law, yeah. You can definitely steal it. Like, that's the kind of environment that they're living in. So, um, moving on to the next person who, you know, we know is going to have a bigger role is Marlene, who is the leader of her section of the of the Fireflies. I thought she was pretty spot on. My memory of her sure, from the yeah. game, I would say if you're if you're going to do a one to one comparison from anybody from the show to the game, I thought she was probably the most spot on character that we've got to meet. I liked her tenacity. I liked her goal. I liked that she again when they run into Joel, they know each other. You can tell that there's there's a background between them. Um, I know. I thought she did a great job, and I, I I can't wait to see more of her. I actually liked her the best. I think. Yeah, I like, too, that she's also, I, again, another strong person, because when that chick's trying to question her, she, like, orders everyone out of the room. Yeah. Like, you know what you need to know, because I'm telling you what you need to yeah, know. Yeah, she was definitely a, a strong authority figure. Uh, anything else on Marlene? Nah. Um, the next one I wanted to see, it, I don't think there's much to say, is we get to meet Tommy in the beginning with uh, Joel's brother, who was a badass in the beginning. You know, he, he had his yeah. shit, and he played his part. Obviously, we now know that he's being, he's lost somewhere, and the whole goal of this is, is Joel wants to get out of out of the town so we can go find his brother. So I don't think there's much to say on Tommy because we've only seen him for about maybe a minute and a half collected time. So, but I like I like the actor. I think it's Gabriel Luna. Um, I do like him. So when we see more of him, I'm sure it'll be great. Which I think that's one of the changes they makes in the original. I think he's just not talking to Tommy or they hadn't talked in a while. Whereas in this one, he's actively looking for him and trying to send out like a signal through like the music and stuff Which like was that. Dope. Yeah. So I was like, okay, you know, I, you are seeing when you're watching this, you're seeing some of the subtle changes that they're making to kind of keep it fresh. And it still plays out like, you know, the story the same, or if anything, maybe makes it slightly better. Yeah. And I can't wait to see what they do with that. So, um, now we get to get into our two big players. Obviously, let's go Ellie. Um, clearly, this is a new incarnation of Ellie. I don't think... Obviously, there's traits of the game version in this version. But I can totally... If my memory serves, this is a whole different personality for her. Not, I mean, she is funny. And when she does like the countdown and says, fuck you. But um, there's just a different... Um, I think just a different kind of personality there. I like um, Ellie Williams... 
I'm still not sure if I would have went with someone that didn't kind of more look like Ellie. With how the, close everyone else looks. With how yeah. close everyone else looked. But the moment she started on screen, I was just like, okay, this will work for me. And I think that was a lot of people's biggest hesitation is because um, Joel, Pedro Pascal looks like Joel. I think a lot of people are having an issue with Ellie. Once I got her flavor of how she's going to be acting, I was like, I can, I can move on with it. And I think she's great. Or did you have any concerns with her? No, as soon as it started, like, I, again, it was always just kind of like a looks thing. But as soon as everything got going, I'm like, okay, you know, she's acting like this is the way, like, I could picture, like, Ellie acting in the situation or whatever. I think she captures it. Yeah. Um. Anything you would think, did she did she stand out more to you than the game, Ellie? Or is that, am, I just, am I remembering it differently? Like, I see just the different traits in her. Like, I see her being more, more um, not outlandish, but more kind of, like, wild when she jumps out of the door and she just kind of seems a little more savage in this one than uh, the other one did. Uh, I don't know. I almost kind of felt like maybe it was the same. And maybe that's just my memory tainted. Because, again, it's been so long. I almost feel like it's almost the same as what it was. So, let's move into um, Joel, who uh, Pedro P- played by Pedro Pascal. I have a hard time not hearing Pedro Pascal's voice. And I know he's doing a, like a more gruffier voice, but I can still hear like the Viper in his voice sometimes. I can still yeah. hear the Mandal- Mandalorian in his voice sometimes. But he looks great. He acts the part. He has that brooding presence when he's on there. When that one dude walks up to him and he's like, if you tell me to follow the light, like I'll beat the shit out of you. Whatever he says, I was like, I'm like, okay, he definitely nails it. Um, I don't know. What are your thoughts on him? Did he did he nail it? I think he's one of the best parts because especially at the beginning, like you feel that he is just like, I don't want to say beaten down dad, but this worn out dad, you know, that's doing everything that he can for his family, for his daughter, you know, because he does like construction or whatever the hell it is that he does. Something to do with like putting up housing or building right. or something like that. And then when he gets home, he's just like too tired to even do like his birthday or yeah. celebrate his birthday the way she wants to. Now he hears him later changed by the world and he's just been beaten down. So he's just got like just that cold, like. Hey, it's me or you, and it's going to be me every time. Yeah, and I would say, I mean, now that we have the characters established, it's like that scene when they're going through, the, they're trying to escape the town, and they're, it's 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 uh, it's Tommy, Joel, and Sarah in the car, and they're trying to get out of the bridge, and then they go through town, and then they get crashed into by, um, I think that, that airplane wrecks. I thought that was fucking way Dude, dope. So and this dope. is why you put it on something like HBO Max, because it looks like a movie when you're watching it. So... I'm super happy that HBO got it because I don't think a lot of other net, um, you know, streaming channels, maybe Amazon, could have done something that looked that great. So I was completely impressed with what they did. Yeah, I'll say, especially that beginning when the outbreak's happening, like one of my favorite parts is when they're leaving that they had already like had to shoot this old lady that was their neighbor, but he like hits someone else on the road with a car and he's taken off and his other neighbor that's some woman, he's like, get back in the fucking house. And he's leaving. She's like, Joel, what are you doing? And you see her out in the street. But then you see the person get up and fucking attack her. Yeah. And so it's like very like Dawn of the Dead. I'm like, man, this is just so good. Like this is a really good pre like showing that initial outbreak. They did such a good job of that. Yeah. And we've yet to see the bigger zombies. So it's they did a nice job showing us in an oversaturated zombie filled world where we live with every show's got zombies, or every movie. It doesn't feel like zombies. Yeah. I was going to say they're doing a pretty interesting job to instantly hook me and uh I think they've got a winner on their hands. So before we go into overall stuff, is there anything else you want to add on about the looks and all that? Actually, I did want to say, I, I kind of want to go into the infected a little bit yeah. more. They are scary, especially when you see that old lady. That she's lady, doing dude, the weird she starts shit. going like, yeah, open up her mouth. And it's and now that they are they have that thing That's coming out of the it's mouth. It's like yeah. weird. It's not like spores, but it's almost like something plant-like. So instead of them mm-hmm. just biting you, it's almost like... They bite you and maybe that goes in your skin and that's how that spreads through the infection. It's like, okay, that's really cool. Like, that's another step more into, like, how they're changing this but for the better to, like, adapt this world. Yeah, because I like how they weren't saying – they weren't using the word zombies. It was more – I mean, obviously, we'll hear things like clickers. But in the beginning, when they established that the fungi is just a spore and using – you know, taking over the host and using you as a puppet. I mean, you really – you're just – you know, an extension of what they, the hive mind wants to do, which essentially is just, you know, world coverage. And it's just, dude, that's a scary, scary thought. And I think they, they executed it quite well. I mean, I was like, damn, dude, this would suck to live in. Yeah. So far from what they've shown, I think they absolutely nailed the infected as far as like how they looked and act. And again, this is pre breakdown before they have like shit grown all over their face and they become like, you know, they've been around for so long that now they're kind of transforming to be representative, more plant based, like, but just that initial, I'm like, damn, like those are scary. Like that. Cause if you have something where like, you know, a horror movie or a horror show or something like that, mm-hmm. but the other part of it's not really that scary. 
then it's almost like, well, what's the point? What's like really the real big threat? So by building this up and making it like those are like 10 out of the 10, like Dawn of the Dead yeah. type scary like creatures because they're so fucking fast too. Like that was a big thing. Like when that one peeps up because they're like eating all the bodies and he's like, I think he hits like a bottle or something yeah. like that. And it just one perks up a convenience and store it whatever just it slams into the wall, but then gets up like instantly off the floor and is like on top of him again. It's like, God damn. Yeah, they did a good job um, showing the fear that's that's real in this world, making it feel alive, having powerful actors give powerful presence. And so, um, I don't know. I think I think they did a great job. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about that before we kind of go into our ending with it? No, I'm ready. So... Um, overall with the adaptation like i said i think it's so far it's 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 great and what it also do it made me feel more comfortable now because obviously this is sony's first big i mean obviously they did uncharted and things like that but we know they're doing they're throwing a lot of ip into um being adapted in the movies or shows so uncharted was hit or miss for a lot of people i liked it i liked it. i think this kind of shows that if you're going to do these because when you think about movie like games uncharted is definitely one of them but that that's not necessarily you don't need to make a movie out of it i think this is showing that you need the tv aspect of it i, I forget if horizon is going to be a show but i'm pretty sure the god of war version that they're talking about Twisted metal is a show so it's like i have a better understanding now if this is the way they're going to do it the only thing that's unfortunate is they're not you're not going to have a neil Druckmann and a craig mazin on, all, helm, on yeah. all these projects so this might just be the diamond in the rough out of all of them but if they're going to have this much attention to the other projects that I'm a little more comfortable moving forward. Are you with like the other, like horizon, God of war, twisted metal. I would hope so, but I'm also on the other end of the spectrum. Like, damn, if you put out your best one and this one ends up being the best one first and then uh, all the other ones suck, then that's all you're going to hear is, Oh, it's going down in quality. They're never going to have another last of us. Whereas if they put out the kind of, worst shows first and then the last of us came out later but i'm like oh the same maybe grace. now they're turning it around and here's the saving grace nice so i think that's everything i've got on it um was there anything else you wanted to get into yeah actually i had a question for you because um after watching this too let me see what did i write down do you mm -hmm. think that watching the show you're getting a better experience out of it than playing the game what if i'm say that again so, like, watching this show, do you think you're experiencing it, having a better experience watching the show, sitting back, relaxing, than when you experience the story as playing the game? Uh, um, I think it's... for Okay, so for me, as a gamer, I'll take the f 20 to 40 hour storyline versus this is going to be nine hours. I That's the way I want to take it in. But that's, you know, my mom doesn't play games. My grandma doesn't play games. I think they did a perfect job because again, there's a lot of people that are always like, "Oh, if you want to, if you want to have watch Last of Us, just then play the game." It's like, well, not everyone does that. So I like that they're doing that for something that most people, not most, but a lot of people are never going to play the game. So I think it's cool that they're doing it. For me, though, it's always going to be the game because you're going to get more out of it. You're going to get more because instead of watching Joel do it, I'm Joel doing it. So for me, I'll take the games all day, but I'm not opposed to anybody who goes let's make a show out of it i was like see i'm on the other end because i didn't play the last of us when it came out i played it later too so to me like i'm like oh man this feels fucking clunky this feels dated like it doesn't feel good to play but the story is so good that that's really kind of the driving thing for me that was the other question i had on here too because i was sitting there watching this with christina and i already know you know the story and what's going to happen as far mm -hmm. as like a majority of um do you think that watching the show do you wish you hadn't played the game like, does the game spoil the show for you? I, I'm still just as good and just as invested, but seeing her, I'm like, oh, man, you know what? At this point, too, I almost kind of wish I didn't know anything about the game so that I could really, like, enjoy the show and be like, ah. It's hard to say when the Pandora's box is already open. You know? yeah. I've already done it, so it's hard for me to go like, oh, I, did I wish I didn't play it? Because it was, I mean, as much as this show was badass, the game when it came out was revolutionary. Yeah. I mean, like, it was the best game out when it came out. Number two got a ton of accolades. There, there, there's a reason why they're remastering it. So it didn't ruin it because, like I said, I haven't played number one in over a decade. So for me, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm remembering a bunch of stuff now. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that was awesome. Oh, yeah, Marlene does this. Oh, yeah. So... I don't think it ruined anything. I'm glad I played the games because now it, it, it lets me tell other people, go, hey, man, if you like the game, you're going to love the show. So, I told my dad about the show. I was like, oh, I know you haven't played the game, but if you want to watch a good 10 out of 10 show, check this out on HBO. Yeah, I think my dad was playing Last of Us. I think I, I'm pretty sure I got it for him. So if he's watching this, like, go watch the show. It's on HBO Max. If my mom's watching this, go watch the show because it's awesome. So, um, yeah, awesome, man. 
Is that everything? Yeah, yeah. Those are just my two. Cool, guys. So that is um, our main topic. Let us know if you guys watched it, if you guys enjoyed the show. Let us know your thoughts. Maybe we missed something. Maybe we didn't cover anything. As it goes on week by week, I'm sure somebody will write in a question. Maybe we can kind of talk about it as we go. Or do, maybe we'll do something separate with it. So uh, leave your thoughts down below, guys. So... Uh-huh.